I received this query. What is the difference between depreciation reserve and accumulated depreciation? I'll just take you through a small journey. Please pay attention. Here I'm going to draw a balance sheet. I am bringing in capital. Let's say capital of 10 crore. I'm going to use that capital for purchasing plant and machinery of 10 crore. And I use this plant and machinery so effectively. So I was able to make some sales. So let me prepare my p and account also here. In the first year, I was able to achieve, let's say sales of sales of 5 crore. And for achieving the sales, I have incurred some expenses. Let's say expense of 1 crore. Now, if I compare the sales with expense 5 crore with 1 crore, I will get a feeling that I have a profit of 4 crore. But we have company law, we have income tax act, which says we have to provide for depreciation. And we know why depreciation is provided. It's basically to capture the wear and tear. It's basically to account for the matching expense when you earn an income. Okay, the matching concept says. Okay, by following this depreciation rules and regulations, I'm going to provide some depreciation. Let's say the useful life of this plant and machinery is five years. So I'm going to provide depreciation of two crore. So what will happen now? My sales is five crore, expense is one crore. I was carrying the belief that my profit is four crore. I was thinking like I can declare the entire four crore as dividend. But no, now there is an expense in the name of depreciation. So my total expense is 3 crore, sales is 5 crore. So what happened to my profit? It is not 4 crore, it has come down. Because my income is 5 crore, my expenses are 3 crore. So the balancing figure 2 crore is the profit. And it's only this profit that can be declared as dividend. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to declare this entire profit. If I declare this entire profit, what will happen? Nothing will be available for retention. Okay. So let me declare that. So from this profit of 2 crore, I'm going to declare and distribute dividend of 2 crore. So entire 2 crore is distributed. So nothing is left for or nothing is left in the name of retained profit. So here retained profit is equal to 0. Now let me also just track my cash flow moment. Look at the cash flow. Capital came in. When capital came in, I had 10 crore. Then I used that capital for purchasing plant and machinery, 10 crore. So entire cash gone. Then I have made a sales of 5 crore. For that I have incurred expenses of 1 crore. So 5 crore cash came in sales 5 crore and for that I incurred expense of 1 crore. So 0 plus 5 minus 1 I still have 4 crore. This depreciation is not a cash outflow so I need not deduct that. It means I have cash of 4 crore but of the cash 4 crore if I had calculated in the traditional method I would have concluded this 4 crore is a profit but no because of depreciation thanks to that provision I am not going to declare entire 4 crore I am going to declare and distribute only 2 crore as a dividend so from this let me pay dividend also 2 crore so what is left over now 2 crore so this is the cash balance okay this is the cash available now let's see what will happen to this balance sheet with this capital, whether any profits can be added, retained profit, no zero because entire profits are distributed. What will happen to this plant and machinery? See, already we have accounted for depreciation 2 crore. So from this plant and machinery, we have to deduct depreciation 2 crore. So now it becomes 8 crore. And with this, we can add the cash balance available, which is 2 crore cash available to crore. Okay. So in this way, 8 plus 2, 10. 10 both sides. Balance sheet tallies. Now, observe this very carefully. If I just concluded that profit is 4 crore by comparing the sales and expenses, 
I would have had a profit of 4 crore. Okay. If I just compare the sales and expenses, 5 minus 1, I would have had the profit as 4 crore. I would have distributed entire 4 crore. Okay. But here, thanks to this depreciation accounting, my profit got reduced to 2 crore and I distributed only 2 crore as dividend. Okay. So nothing is left over. But what happened on the other side? The plant and machinery value reduced by 2 crore in the name of depreciation. But on the other side, cash balance increased by 2 crore. Okay. So there is a reduction in the value of asset depreciation 2 crore. And there is a cash balance available 2 crore. Now this is only the first year position. Second year what will happen? If I assume the same figures, what will happen in the second year? Again, another depreciation of 2 crore will be provided. And that 2 crore will get added with this depreciation balance. So in depreciation already you have 2 crore. With that another 2 crore will be added. Okay. And this depreciation will become 4 crore. Because this is basically accumulated position. And what will be the reduced value of the asset now? 10 crore minus 4 crore. It will become 6 crore. But... In the next year also, there will be another 2 crore cash made available. So what will happen to the cash balance? Cash balance already 2, we are making another 2. So cash balance will become 4 crore. In the same way, if we repeat this for all the 5 years, what will happen eventually is this depreciation every year 2 crore for 5 years, 2 into 5. 10 crore we will be providing in the name of depreciation. So what will happen to the value of plant and machinery now? 10 minus 10 it becomes 0. But on the other side we will have 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. That is 5 years. 5 years cash retained thanks to depreciation accounting. Here we will have 10 crore. Now if you see 10 minus 10 the value of plant and machinery has become 0. But on the other side, you will have cash of 10 crore. So you can use this cash for replacing the plant and machinery. Replacement. Okay. It's actually for this purpose, depreciation is provided. It's actually for this purpose, this accumulated depreciation is accounted. And on the other side, cash will get retained in the business for replacement. Okay. But most of the time, all this happens only in air or it is as good as writing them in water. The reason is, whatever you provide as depreciation and because of that profits get restricted, it means cash balance will be available. To that extent, it's fair. But whether this cash balance of 2 crore Will it be retained every year for all the 5 years to facilitate the replacement of the asset at the end of the 5th year? That is a million dollar question. Because the moment they retain some cash or the moment they see some cash, it will have n number of requirements. Okay? In reality, it will not happen in the way I explained. Because what did I said? Whatever the depreciation that is provided, that is reflecting in the form of a cash balance on the other side. And that cash balance will be saved year after year after year for 5 years and it will be made available for replacement. But companies are not going to save, the business are not going to save. That's where problem comes. But some companies, they want to take this exercise very religiously, very systematically because they are concerned about their future as well, not only the present, they are also concerned about their future. So it's those companies which will go for depreciation reserve fund. Okay. It's very similar to the accumulated depreciation. See in accumulated depreciation, what happens? You are giving one effect in PNL. Let me highlight. You are giving one effect in PNL. Okay. You are giving another effect in depreciation. So year after year you are providing in PNL and that gets accumulated. But there is no 
tracking or control over the cash that is made available from depreciation. Okay. So in accumulated depreciation, they just pass an entry in P&L on one side and on the other side, it will be accumulated in balance sheet and in financial statements, it will be presented by deducting it from the fixed assets. But no care is taken to safeguard or preserve this cash. But on the other side, the companies which are going for a depreciation reserve fund, do you know what they will do? They will debit P&L on one side and on the other side, instead of calling it as accumulated depreciation, they will call it as depreciation reserve and whatever the cash they set aside, which they got by debiting in the form of uh, depreciation, they will not simply keep it as cash. Rather, they will invest in a kind of sinking fund or some other investment such a way that that investment matures when the old plant and machinery or the asset retires. Okay. And that maturity amount will be available for replacement. Are you getting me? So it's in this aspect, this depreciation reserve and accumulated depreciation differs. Most of the web searches, if you look at it, it will say that accumulated depreciation and depreciation reserve are one and the same. Yes, but the final purpose, there is a difference. In accumulated depreciation, you debit the P&L, you create accumulated depreciation, you show it as a deduction from fixed asset and you do not bother about what you are going to do with the cash that got into the system, that got retained into the system as a result of depreciation. Whereas in depreciation reserve fund, what you do is you debit the P&L, you create the depreciation reserve. This happens on one side. And on the other side, you ensure the cash what is retained is not just left just like that. Rather, they are invested in a fund in such a way that when the existing asset retires, this fund will mature and that money will be available for replacement. So it is in that context, these two actually differs. I hope this answers or this clarifies your query. Thank you for watching this video. Hope you liked it. If you wish to learn more on this topic, do check our comprehensive online course. I have given the link in the description below. If you like this video lecture, do not forget to click on that like, share and subscribe button with bell icon.